So the question that we are answering today, and I'm treating it as fresh because it is a new semester, and there's loads of people who haven't really had to encounter this question before is, what's maths got to do with any of this? Okay, you spent a little bit of time, some of you spent a lot of time thinking about the design process in a new situation and how you're going to fit into it. Now, for a moment, just consider why these are together, okay? Science, I think it's almost reasonably clear, isn't it? You can just say, because science, and that's enough of an argument, but actually let's give an actual reason why, right? Uh, why does it make sense that science fits together? Well, you know, when you have like a big discovery, right? Scientists are the ones who are making all the announcements, aren't yeah. they? Scientists are the people who are announcing the discoveries. If you might remember, um, not that long ago, they'd say things like, Oh, we've discovered a new particle. New particle has been discovered at the Large Hadron Collider, blah, blah, blah. Scientists are the people who are excited about it. Scientists are the people who it's named after. Right? So that makes sense. Okay. Technology, where does that come into it? Like, think about the Apollo program. Where does technology come into that? Okay, the rocket. You're in a spacecraft that's loaded with technology. Technology is what the scientists are using in order to make their discoveries. Right? And then you go one step further and say, well... Once you've made those, dis those discoveries, engineers are the people who take those concepts, those principles, and then apply them so that we can use them, right? Think of something like, say, GPS. GPS, like this small little rectangle in my pocket can tell me anywhere on the planet where I am within just a few meters. That's crazy. And that's engineering, taking advantage of science and technology, okay? So then you think, mm, dot, dot, dot. Like, what's, what's the connection? Where in this picture? That seems like a pretty self-contained system, okay? So here we go. I have a big idea for you, right? And if you're, if you're following along with your notes, which you ought to be, here's my big idea, okay? I would say, like, we would agree the Apollo program, for example, it's about kind of exploration and going places. You know, uh, people say, why do people climb Everest, right? Because it's there, right? That's why you climb it. You want to explore. It's natural, right? Well, with regard to exploration, like we call explorers pioneers, right? Mathematics is the real pioneer behind all scientific endeavor. Right? Mathematics is the true pioneer of the sciences. And here's my justification for why this is a crucial, crucial idea. And we're going to expand on it. That's what this lesson is about. Mathematics enables us to wrap our heads around things and understand them and to manipulate them where instruments and experiments can't go. Let me say that again because it's such a groundbreaking idea. Literally groundbreaking. Maths enables us to understand things where instruments and experiments can't go. Or at least where they can't go yet and maybe they will follow. Okay? Mathematics goes first. Now, I don't take it you're just going to believe me, so I'm going to try and prove this to you, because proof, I, I, that's what math machines do, right? Uh, thanks, Tom, I appreciate that. <laughs> Alright, so, to understand this, right, I think the easiest way to explain um, why this is true is if we think of these three fields, these are three things that you study in school, okay? Just only three that I'm going to think about. Science, history, and we'll get to mathematics last, okay? All three of these, and in some ways all the subjects that you do, right? At least all three of these, they're just kind of, well, they're different ways to know what's <coughs> true about the universe, about things around you, about events that have taken place, right? Now, here's my question to you, and I'm going to um, ask you to actually talk to the person next to you in a minute. My question to you is, for each of these three, right? Being that I think they're all trying to answer that same question. What is true? How can we know that it's true? Science, history, and maths, they take very, very different approaches to doing, answering the same question, right? When we say something's been scientifically proven, right? Or something about history has been proved, or something mathematically has been proved, we know that it's true. It means completely different things for each field. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. How do these three differ from each other? If you had to answer the question, science knows things because of... Like what's the mechanism that it uses? And history knows things because of, and it's going to be a different answer. Okay? So turn to the person next to you, try and write something down for each of the three, and then we'll come together and share some thoughts. Right? So let's start at the gate with science. If you want to, if, they, if you read in the paper, something has been proven scientifically, what are you assuming that people have proved it? What have they done? 
to be able to claim, I've proved this, I've used science. Anyone want to give me a suggestion as concise as you can? Yeah. They should have conducted an experiment and like it would have met the hypothesis. Yeah, fantastic. So they're like, okay, I've got an idea. I think it's true. We'll experiment. We'll test it out. And here's an important thing, right? If a scientist came to you and said, okay, I've tested something out. I did an experiment once and it happened. What I expected, my hypothesis, it happened. I, I just carried out the experiment and it was like, cool, I confirmed it. Would you say that's enough to no. prove something scientifically? No. The answer is emphatically no, right? What would you expect they're missing? Yeah, you've got to do it over and over and over again. In fact, that's really, like on top of experimentation, the key is that you can have an observation and you can replicate it. And other people can replicate it, right? In a different place, a different time, with slightly different conditions, but you expect what you're going to get and you can get it over and over again, okay? Repeated observation and experimentation. That's the way science knows things, okay? Let's move forward. History. Now, I put these next to each other. Because history is quite clearly the opposite of this. You can't repeat history, right? Like, it's there in the past. You can't go back and say, well, let's just see what happens if we run it again, okay? <laughs> so therefore, who wants to give me a suggestion? How do you know something historically when it comes to history? Yeah, Matt. There is, like, a rock art or, like, old pieces of paper or, like, yep. tombs and stuff. Okay, so you've got all these, like, physical objects yeah, which physical can... Things. Yeah, evidence, yeah. What would you add to that? Oh, yeah, okay, fantastic. Now, question, you've got evidence. So what, what are you going to do with that evidence? Bring it to Yeah, give it to the people who do history. Yeah, Shelley, what are you going to say, Shreya? You're going to find the story behind it. Okay, you're trying to, yeah, you're trying to put together like some narrative which makes sense of all of the art and like, you know, things that you discover and eyewitness accounts, all that kind of thing, right? In other words, you're taking all these different things, which are called sources, right? And you're trying to analyze them, get some meaning out of them, and try and fit them together in one coherent whole. What makes sense of all of these things, right? Okay, last one. Mathematics, what we're really interested in today. It's different from both of these, right? It's different from both of these. How would you suggest, how do, how do we know things? How do you prove something in maths? Any takers? Did anyone like get to? Okay, so we got, we've got formulas and stuff like that. But let me just push on that because I don't think that's a bad idea. But how do you know a formula is true? Like in a right angle triangle. If it works, if like. It yeah, 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 yeah. Go on, go on. Maths is trippy. Um, if it works, if, it, if you can do it. Yeah, okay, if it, if it, if it makes sense. The rule. Yeah, okay, alright. No, let's, let's keep going on this, right? So here's a rule, right? Uh, this rule has, is so famous, it has a name, namely. Pythagoras. Pythagoras theorem, okay? Uh, and these are the three sides, okay? Now, just, just ponder for a second. What would it mean to prove that this is true using this kind of approach, scientifically? What would it mean? You just explained to me how to know something scientifically. How would you prove that scientifically? Yeah. Like use different values for A, B, and then keep repeating it. Yeah, that's right. And obviously, we know Pythagoras' theorem is only meant to work in certain kinds of triangles, namely right, right angle triangles. So what you would have to do is you would have to draw a heck of a lot of right angle triangles. And you have to do it again and again and again. And hopefully, when you've done lots of them, you could say, aha, repeated observation, I can confirm it. But that's not what mathematicians do, right? You can prove this, and you don't even have to draw more than a single diagram. It's completely different to the scientific way. Okay? The way that I, you know, I, this is the reason why I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm the expert meant to show you, right? The way that I would phrase it is that mathematics uses deductive logic, right? Um, when you said rules, okay, that's like things are meant to fit together in such and such a way. That's logic. And from logic, from a few things you know, you can deduce other things, right? You apply the laws. You don't need to go out there and look for sources, right? You don't have to do it many, many times. I can draw a single diagram and say, yep, without a shadow of a doubt, my logic holds. Does that make sense? This is different, okay? Mathematics can be done just with a sheet of paper in front of you, whereas these, you need like apparatuses. And you need to go out there and have a look at these things. Mathematics differs in this way. Mathematics goes where instruments and experiments can't go, right? So I need to give you some examples. I've got quite a few, all right? So, so this is, um, well, it's, it's art. It's art. Um, this is from Interstellar, 
right? This is the artist's impression, what they did actually, mathematically, to work out what a black hole would look like if you were actually approaching it and trying to look at it from a distance, okay? Now let's just consider this for a second, right? Tell me what you know about black holes. For instance, why are they called black? Because they're not white. That one's pretty white. Looks kind of white to me. Ah, uh, well, anyway, um, like imploding stars, aren't they? Yes. That's what they are. So they're why? What does what does black have no to? There's no light. Okay, there's this prob There's some problem with light, right? The What's light. the problem with a black hole and light? Why is there the an issue? It's so strong, the light is actually getting sucked into it. Good. Okay, so we know that light can be emitted from anything, right? And light travels at a certain speed. Okay, but gravity can be so strong if you have a super massive object that even light at its crazy speed can't escape, okay? Which is why there's that, that black part in the middle. That light that's coming from the outside is actually not inside the black hole. It's this disk of hot matter that's going around and the light's being twisted around, okay? Now, being that light can't escape and light is the fastest object that we have, right? I mean, I'm gonna break the fiction for a second. But if light can't escape, can you and me escape from an object when you get too close? The answer is no. There's a whole name for um, the, the phenomenon that talks about that, namely the event horizon. You've heard that phrase before. After you go past that, it doesn't matter how fast you go. You can go the speed of light and you'll never get out, right? So if the speed of light can't get out, I take it that our fancy scientific instruments and our experiments also can't get out of there. So you can go in there, you can do any experiments you like, but you're never coming back with the knowledge that you've got, right? Black holes weren't arrived at by science. They are arrived at by maths, right? We thought, okay, well look, we understand the laws of gravity, we understand how, how light behaves, okay? Mathematically, it should be possible that an object exists which is such strong gravity that it does that and you can never get away, right? Does that make sense? You see how science didn't go there. Mathematics went there because it can go anywhere and then science has confirmed it. We've gone and we've found places like at the center of a galaxy. We're like, we've done all our calculations. Something in there that we can't see is, you know, in there, the mass is too huge. This is the only explanation that makes sense, right? Mathematics went first and then science confirmed it by observing. And we've looked at lots of galaxies and we've seen a lot of things where it seems like that must be there.